Hello and welcome to Engineering Simple. So, in the previous video, I kind of talked about the objectives of this video series, so which are the calculating the line to ground fault, then trying to to limit the fault current to a certain limit, and we can do that with adding a a neutral grounding resistor or a neutral grounding reactor to the neutral of the low voltage. Uh, windings and this is where I left off so I started drawing the sequence networks and I kind of added the numbers so this is a positive negative zero sequence and I apply the line to ground fault on the low voltage side so now let me get back So now, so what I will do, I'll draw the, this, these the sequence networks with the equivalent impedances. Just kind of simplifying. So basically, so I have the source and I just want the equivalent positive sequence impedance. Then in the negative sequence, I just want the negative sequence equivalent impedance so one is positive two means negative and the same thing for the zero sequence network so zero is means uh, zero sequence equivalent and these are tied so what will flow here is i zero which is equal to I1, which is equal to I2, zero sequence, positive sequence, negative sequence, currents, which will flow through here, through the zero, the equivalent zero sequence impedance, through here, through the negative se equivalent sequence impedance, back to the source, through the positive sequence equivalent impedance. And if you go back here, the pot, the equivalent positive sequence impedance, basically it's this impedance, the high side or the high side system impedance plus the transformer impedance, which is the same as the negative sequence impedance. For the zero, zero sequence impedance, it's this impedance plus this impedance in parallel with this impedance, the, the entire thing in series with this impedance. So I can put them here. So the positive sequence equivalent impedance is equal to the negative sequence equivalent impedance, which is 0 0.2 plus 11%, which is 11.2%. So the, Z, the equivalent zero sequence impedance, if you go back to that diagram, so it's 0.2%, uh, sorry, 0.4 plus 1.02. This in parallel with 48.49. Percent plus, and I'm just gonna rewrite this here. Just come here and re so for now, I'm gonna go ahead and write three times Z, which is the neutral grounding resistor or or reactor, plus ten point two six percent. In this case, since I'm starting with a solidly grounded neutral, so there is no neutral grounding resistor or reactor, so this is zero. So if you calculate the entire thing, it comes to 
So, so the the phase phase A to ground fault. This is phase A to ground fault since I'm doing in percent. So it's three times 100% divided by positive equivalent impedance plus negative equivalent impedance plus zero equal equivalent impedance. So it's 300 divided by 11.2 plus 11.2 plus 11.64. So if you calculate this comes to 8.813 per unit. So that's the phase A to ground fault in per unit. Then if I want to calculate that in amps, so it's 8.813 per unit times the base MVA, which is 27 MVA divided by 12 kV square root of 3, because it's a, a, a low side line to ground fault. So this would be 11,000 and 17 amps, which is the same as 11.017 Ka. So 11 kiloamps. So that's a lot of fault current. Now the question is, How can I limit this line to ground fault to 6,000 amps? How can we limit this line to ground fault to 6,000 amps? So basically, lower it from 11,000 to 6,000 amps. Well, one, we can add a neutral grounding reactor. So basically, the low voltage windings you have here's the neutral. You add a reactor, basically, a reactance. So you add a reactance. So you have X1, X2. These are bushings, X3 bushings. So now, so we would add a, a neutral ground uh, reactor, basically. So what this, if you, if we remember from from the calculations of the positive sequence, negative sequence, and zero sequence impedances, the, the neutral grounding came into play only in the zero sequence impedance. That means this reactance will only impact the zero sequence calculation. So I'll stop here and in the next video, I'll go through and calculate, show you how to calculate the, the required reactor that would limit the fault current from 11, that would reduce the fault current from 11,000 amps to 6,000 amps. Stay tuned and have a great day.